Uzmanību trasē, trasa brīva, startē Ševicu trasts. Kā mans trasē? I'm here in Sigilda, which this week is hosting the European Luge Championships and the Eberspecher World Luge Cup. Um, I'm here to meet with Martin Rubinis, who was the winner of the bronze medal in the 2006 uh, win Winter Olympics uh, men's singles luge, uh, which actually made him the very first representative of Latvia to win a Winter Olympics medal. Uh, in, and he's now the coach of the uh, Latvian Luge Federation, uh, as well as, in his spare time, being a DJ. So, Martins, um, could you could you say something about when when luge came to Latvia? How how did the sport start off here? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I was not born at that time. But that's definitely uh, what what I remember from history. I, I'm not sure if it's all all right, <laughs> but uh, something around uh, 1904 uh, was was the first track. It was built, I think, in Wogre which is uh, some some 50 kilometers from here and uh, and then it, it it started kind of develop and i remember my grandfather telling a stories about uh, that there was a, a bobsled track uh, built in agenskalns which is which is riga the, the opposite yeah. part of the of the river yeah and, and how about yourself how, how did you get into luge uh, that was actually quite a sad story at the beginning. Uh, at a, at a grade two in school, I think uh, I was a little kid. Uh, I was uh, quite energetic, yeah. and, uh, and as, as normally kids do. <laughs> and and then there was the basketball uh, coach came to our school and asked for kids who who want to play basketball. Yeah. Uh, of course, I raised a hand and uh, and was ready to play, but uh, when when it when the Time came. Uh, teacher said, "You know, they didn't pick you." Uh, so I was, of course, I was sad after that. And, and but, but year after, to our school came um, Olympic champion Vera Zazulia, uh, and, and her friend uh, were our sports teacher. Mm -hmm. And she decided to make a group and ask uh, who want to come and become a slider. And when, when you are a kid, like mm. nine years old, uh, and somebody asks who want to be a slider, <laughs> you, yeah. you, you see around the uh, mountains, yes, yes. And, uh, yeah, and, and why not? Yeah. And if somebody calls it sport, mm. just, just be it. <laughs> and uh, when I came home and said, I will be a loser. <laughs> what was their reaction? Lo lo looked at me and, <laughs> and said, no. <laughs> But uh, yeah, after after three days of uh, of uh, crying and, and asking and, and that, they, they finally signed the permission, and they thought, yeah, oh, of course he he come, he will see some 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 day how it looks, and and will try and and will just drop it himself. But yeah, somehow I, I never dropped. <laughs> But at the time, were you having to come from Riga to, to Sigilda to train every every time, or, or there was a facility available? In yeah, Riga? That, that that was the that was the way we started. But yeah. actually, like uh, first two years, we even didn't see the track. Right. Uh, yes, uh, we yes. we had uh, like physical conditioning trainings for kids uh, just just to prepare body uh, for for the for the racing on the track and. And at that time we had, uh, there were, where the Olympic Center now is in Riga is, there was a hippodrome. Right. And in, in the territory of hippodrome there were start ramp for, for, for luge athletes. And that's where I first time have seen the sled and, and there were even like three curves. So with the kids we, we started there. <laughs> And uh, and of course, from uh, that, that was the uh, late end of the Soviet uh, Union, and and still uh, and still those uh, 
how you call uh, uh, there were di different uh, different organizations uh, who who work with athletes uh, they, they were like mo more from the from from different factories uh, some some different unions and, and and I was under the union called Varpa and, uh, and yeah, I, I started in that group, uh, and of course at that time they, they supported athletes. They had uh, like a little bus yeah. that took us from Riga, and we, we came to Sigulda for the first trainings. And of course, as a kid, uh, since uh, track at that time was very busy, we never see a daylight. <laughs> oh gosh, you were, you were <laughs> we, we, we the, always the end of we the day. always start training like uh, eleven o'clock in the evening uh, by midnight, and then you're back home at uh, like. Two o two o'clock in the morning, and and of course uh, my school at that time suffered, yeah. <laughs> and, and and all of that. But uh, at at one moment when when the Soviet Union collapsed, uh, my coach decided uh, that that only way to save me as an athlete was was for me to go to Muriani Sports Gymnasium, right. which is which is a yeah. full time full time gymnasium where, where kids stay for the whole week and and you have food, you have uh, all the all the school lessons and everything, and, and of course it's much closer to Sigulda as well, yeah. so yes. we, yeah. we were able to, to come here for trainings. Gosh, that, that's yes. that's that's my beginnings. <laughs> so when when you came for the first time here to <laughs> to Sigulda, having having just done the, the you know the very short length of track in in Riga, how how terrified were you when you when you first sort of got to the top of the? I, I would not the, say that I was terrified. Yeah. Uh, I was very surprised because <laughs> I looked around and I thought, why would they build so such a high walls of, of ice uh, if I was expecting a mountain? <laughs> oh, yeah. <Yes. laughs> and and yes. yeah, but 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 we sit down in a track. Uh, the the elder athletes uh, they yeah. they bring us down on a sled with the feet down and and, mm. and very slowly just to show how the track is. Yeah. And actually, I was uh, quite uh, quite eager to go myself. <laughs> okay, right. So it was, yes. Yeah, and, and we started we started from half a track, and uh, coaches gave us a little sled, which at that time was was fine for me. And uh, yeah, they said you just break a little bit, and when you are fine with going, then you then you let the sled go and try to get to get down from the moment you you, you start sliding. So first run, I, I, I went a, a little bit, uh, put my feet on uh, on ice and a little bit break. But uh, second run already, I thought, why would I break? Uh, Luz is not about breaks and about breaking. We just uh, sit down and go. And, and actually, my second run was already without breaks from the junior start in the middle of the track. Gosh, and, that's it. And, uh, it's 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 yes. quite uh, quite impressive for kids. And, 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 and this curve, what you see here, is a curve 15. And and uh, and this this uh, this curve has uh, the the highest uh, g force uh, for for the for the whole track yeah. because it's it's long straightaway when you gain ma maximum speed and then it's like 90 degree corner even more and uh, and, and the g force there is uh, is about 9g gosh uh, oh that's yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, and the thing was that uh, that it pulled somehow my neck back uh, when when you are a kid and you are not expecting that it's uh, like like 5G already is, is something yeah. with if you if you can compare it with the weight, yeah. then if you lay on a on a side of the bed and just hold your head, yeah. and and then put another five uh, five times that weight of, of your head, that that's that's how much pressure you get there to, to pull so your. Really to pull. <laughs> but of course, for kids with the slower speed, it's it's not that much. But still, it's the first experience of experiencing G-force. Gosh, that must be <laughs> something. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, it's it's fun, of course. It's fun, and 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 yeah, my my first runs went quite well, and uh, probably because of that, I, I I kind of picked up very quick and uh, and loved that sport. But uh, I, I I I can't say it was the smooth sailing all the time. <laughs> my my already second year was uh, I grew up. And at that time, we, we didn't had the, that transitioning sleds from re really small one to the bigger yeah. ones, and, and so we were we were getting uh, some old stuff from a Soviet team 
that uh, that the team couldn't use because it was not drivable, and they gave it to kids. <laughs> oh, <it's old> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and and yeah, and then I was hitting all the walls and and, and couldn't understand what's happening because uh, that that sled was not steerable. But uh, but at that, that time, as a kid, you, you don't really know if it's your fault or you can't slide or, or the sled is wrong. And, 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 and one year was really, really tough challenge for me. I, I, I had the, every run I, I drive on the track for the whole year, was I was hitting walls. So every, every day I already, I already knew how to make three, 360 after curve 15 and, and, and uh, go into the finish curve uh, backways. <laughs> and, and, and still have a, uh, still have a decent finish, <laughs> but uh, but probably so that, that, that's that's something also you, you need yeah. to experience to, to really uh, be grateful about the good sled you have afterwards. <laughs> and, and when when did you get your first sled that was kind of purpose purpose made for, for yourself? Uh, that, that was also sleds uh, built uh, for kids but uh, it was finally fitting me yeah. it was the next size and uh, and uh, and I, I started that season with the new sled and, and uh, I started sliding and I was uh, very surprised that it steers it, it, it goes the way I like I like it to go and and then uh, from that on uh, I, I quite quickly picked up uh, like that uh, Luge, luge for myself and, and the racing mode and, and, and so then, then, then it went well. Can I ask uh, a really daft question, which is how, how do you steer a luge? Uh, that's actually <laughs> like a dancing with the whole body. <laughs> uh, because yes. what, 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 yes. I, what yes. I try to tell my athletes and to explain how it works, yes. it, it works like a, like a good suit. It, yeah. uh, every sled is built uh, specifically for the athlete's body. Yeah. And uh, and when you move, it it should move with you perfectly, and uh, so you 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 become like like one together, yes, like yes, with yes, the, yes, with yes, the sled, yes. and and then it works because it's 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 all all flexible flexible mechanics, and uh, and it, and it really uh, really sends the information from your body to the ice. <laughs> and and you you construct yeah. now for for members of the Latvian team. Yeah, that, that, that yes. was yeah. Uh, that was that was my my second passion at that time yes. uh, because we didn't had any experienced coach who who, who, who could help with us uh, with the sleds, and then uh, and then I at, at one time I realized that uh, that we need uh, that I need to do something to make my sled better. And uh, then, of course, it started with, with little things like, like filing, trying, trying to make the right geometry and, uh, and all of that, and experimenting. And of course, when you, when you make something on your sled and then you try it on the track, then uh, somehow it starts to, to come, dots, yeah. dots come together. Yeah. So what I did and, and how it reacted in the track. And uh, so it was, it was quite a, a long, long journey until I get to the first really uh, sled built by myself, which yeah. was uh, also drivable. I, I, I would I, I, <laughs> experimented on a yeah, few. Yeah, yeah. So, so I did all the experiments on myself. <laughs> And uh, and uh, and it's good that uh, it ended up like I'm here. I'm standing yes, and I'm walking. Yes. I, I would not I would not give those those sleds to the kids. <laughs> the, the first yes. I built. <laughs> but but uh, at at the, at, the, at the same time it was uh, a lot of lot of fun and a lot of discovery around it. Can you say something about the Turin Olympics and, and the 2006 Winter Games? How, how, what well, they meant to you? Actually, actually the, the Turin Olympics, uh, already a year before that, we, we, we got, a, got a chance uh, for the first time to experience the track yes. and, and to have some first training runs. And uh, it, uh, it uh, felt directly like a track for me. It was it was very challenging. It was it was one of those tracks in the world where you you don't hear athletes uh, sitting in a in a dressing room and chatting. Really? Everyone was uh, so <laughs> focused, <laughs> so so ready to, to make yeah. his run. Yeah. Don't even see anybody around. Yeah. And and that's probably what I what I like about those tracks. And and I, actually, single the track is is also very challenging, and especially especially for for athletes from other countries who. Yeah. Who don't have such such many runs and, and such such much uh, experience on the track, so so that's why that's why Torino felt uh, really the right track for me, 
and uh, and from very first run I, I picked up it uh, really really quick and and uh, just for the next season when there was Olympic season I, I built a new sled which was not really working well at the beginning of the season then I rebuilt it and rebuilt it and rebuilt it and and I think uh, the sled what I was using in a, in a Torino Olympics uh, I, I, I finished it around two weeks before Olympics oh wow oh, I, I, yeah. Yeah, uh, I was I, I was I was sleeping sleeping in a workshop, not uh, not to waste time for traveling home and back, <laughs> and, and yeah, and, and, and at, the, at the end it worked all together. But uh, what I see about those those big moments and, and Olympics especially, it's it's not always about the athlete uh, who has uh, the the best equipment and best opportunity and and like. Uh, He's the best on the paper at that moment, but but it's about uh, if you really deserve the, the place that you are winning at that time. So yeah, yeah, and and, and those those real realizations just come with the time, and and that's what I try to teach my athletes that uh, if you want to win, you have to deserve it, and to deserve it, you have to work for it, and and there is no shortcuts, and there is no 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 way to just uh, go and get it. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. No, no one did it. <laughs> so it must have been an amazing, amazing yes. moment though, being on, a, on, a, on an Olympic podium. For yeah, yeah, true, yes. true. Can I ask um, about luge in, in Latvia? I mean, how popular is it as a as, as a as a sport, as, as something that Latvians do? If you see? Actually, it uh, year by year it becomes more and more yeah. popular, and, and of course it, it goes hand in hand with the with the results the yeah. team is showing. If if kids see that there are somebody who is in a podium and, and doing yeah. great, they they want to come and be the same. Yeah. <laughs> and and of course, if the team is not doing well, then there is less kids coming. Yeah. But but uh, I see the recent years. Uh, uh, I would I would not mm. say it's a, it's a luck, but but every year we 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 were able to to find some development in, in, in a system in a, in a sleds and and also in preparation and, and team is doing better and better and, and young athletes are coming. Yeah. And there is uh, there is no such a thing that there is one athlete and a team who is great and, and others mm. are, are are just travelers <laughs> together. Yeah. So, so we, we try to work with, with everybody who comes in, into our team and of course uh, uh, with these years that we, that we spent building sleds for the senior team, uh, uh, the, the sleds we don't use uh, for the senior team, we already try to give the juniors so they have a good experience on a, on a good material already sliding so they, when they come in they are, they are not just only new, they already know what, what they're doing. I think four, four golds and a silver yeah. last week is a real testament to the uh, Yeah, that, the that, team, that, was, that was that was a great <laughs> moment for yeah. me as, as a coach yeah. and, a, and a member of a team that I, that I see that really that, that hard work that, that the whole team and athletes and, and mechanics uh, put together that, that it finally resulted on something that we were expecting on our, on our home track. Fantastic, yeah. <laughs> My la last question I wanted to ask is, I see from your CV you're, you're a DJ as, as well as a luge, but <laughs> well, that was what's a, the that, combination of the that, two? That was the long time ago. <laughs> oh, <right. laughs> but, but yeah, my, my, my favorite uh, part of, uh, of being a DJ was, I was looking uh, at the time for, for something different. Uh, I, I needed somehow to to take my mind off the, off the sleds at some moments. So just, just to... Just to not even to relax, uh, but yeah. to disconnect yeah. and to connect yeah. it again. Yeah. And and of course the, the the music I was playing at that time it was just the beginnings of two uh, thousands uh, and uh, and some new style called drum and bass. Uh, oh yes, yes. Uh, originated yes. from UK. Yeah. <laughs> came yes. came came out and, and there were very very mm. famous drum and bass uh, producers mm. at that time and and we were the ones in Latvia who who started to play drum and bass the first Fantastic. the first crew yeah. Varka crew. Fantastic. So <laughs> yeah, and, and actually that the mu that music is very yes. yeah. very very like uh, speed orientated. Yeah, so <laughs> and, does and, link him with and, the and, and, yes. and at some at some point as a, as a junior athlete I remember uh, I had some rec records for yes. my warm-up and, and, and it helps to warm up as well for, for the racing. <laughs>
Yeah, now now my now my uh, yeah understanding and feeling about music uh, of course has has changed dramatically. Now now I appreciate uh, some classical music and live yes. instruments. Uh, yes. And but but yeah, music is 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 something uh, and and the vibration itself. Uh, if you if you come to the track, you hear the sound of the of the sled. Yes. If you hear hear how it uh, how it connects with the eyes, how it vibrates, yes. Yes. it's also so, some kind of music. <laughs> And and, uh, and and yeah, if you, if you learn how to listen to music really yeah. deeply, then also you can hear if the sled sounds right on a track or not. So that helped probably me with that. Gosh, yes, <laughs> it's great. The, mu the music of victory. And yeah, <laughs> artist. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks for the opportunity to come today. I mean, it's just uh, I've learnt learnt so much, and it's just wonderful to see um, yeah. yourself and to see the Latvian team in action. And, and uh, thank you for coming here and having yes. interest about it. Oh, and, 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 uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>